Hello folks, I hope you're all doing very well. Today I'm going to show you motion compensation in action. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about, well essentially what it does is when you're being thrown around in a motion rig, well your VR headset doesn't know that you're being thrown around in a motion rig. It just thinks that you're probably doing it yourself. So basically motion compensation allows you to keep central in the cockpit without your head being flung around, not just side to side but even outside of the cockpit like this when you're pulling lots of G's. It's a brilliant technique and in fact I've been testing out Sim Racing Studios new OpenXR motion compensation mode and it's running really well and the best way I can show it in action is by throwing myself around in a fighter jet and that's exactly what we're going to do today in the Vario Aero. So before all of that a very quick word from our sponsor. FS Academy really does take your flight sim knowledge to the next level. In fact, you'll be greeted by a real wheel pilot and instructor, which will guide you through a series of different training exercises from a GA pilot all the way up to being a full airline captain. In these tutorials, you'll get real bespoke sort of instructions and it will really feel like the pilot is right there beside you. You'll be surprised how much knowledge you'll pick up, even if you're a seasoned veteran like me, or if you're just starting out, there is definitely a training package for you. I'll have links in the description below of where you can find FS Academy and I highly recommend that you give it a go and it's why they are sponsoring this video. Right, with that out of the way, let's get this aircraft configured. In fact, we don't need to do too much. Just make sure the pitot heat is on. Because we're going to be doing some shenanigans here. Parking brake off. Now watch how the H2 is going to pull me right back. I'm going to feel the acceleration. However, my viewpoint is not going to change at all. Beforehand, it would be right back here like this. But now, it's tracking you in relation to the motion rig. Very clever. And this is the result. Here we go. Oh wow. <laughs> Notice how I'm being pulled right back now. Oh, that feels so good. Gear coming up. But my viewpoint has not changed at all. We'll just take the afterburner off now and just level out. And again, as I start to move it with the motion rig, my viewpoint stays exactly the same. That's really clever, isn't it? And it's even more impressive when you do a pretty aggressive roll like this. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's crazy. I am being thrown side to side as you can probably see, and I wouldn't normally fly quite this aggressively, but I just want to show you how, you know, it just works really, really well. So that also means that I'm feeling even more motion than before. And the way I can describe that is beforehand, I would unconsciously keep my head level to the cockpit because, well, it's natural for me to keep that position and I do it without thinking. So that means the motion rig is moving underneath me, but yet I'm trying to stay stationary. But now I can keep my head firmly on my seat and feel every movement, but yet hardly move around in the cockpit. It's brilliant. It really is an amazing and very clever technique. And it's working in OpenXR now, which is absolutely fantastic. See now that I'm really feeling like we're accelerating, which we are, but yet I'm not back here. So I've just switched motion compensation off. Now let's see what happens when I accelerate. Look at the difference here. Here we go. My head is moving back and I'm actually, my head is in the seat. <laughs> Massive difference there. And also if I roll right, my head is actually pretty much outside the cockpit. <laughs> it's just, it's annoying. So let's now put it back on again. I need to get a better shortcut for this, actually. 
and you get a little uh, little person say motion compensation off or on, which is kind of cool. Let's now accelerate again. Look at the difference there. It's night and day difference. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So how do you get motion compensation working? Well, there's a couple of things you need. The first one being a wit motion sensor. You can buy one off Amazon. I'll have a link in the description below where I found mine. That's not affiliated or anything like that. It's just the one I found. Make sure it's the correct model number. I'll put all that in the uh, description below because I can't remember offhand. You also need the correct cable. Once you've bought that, all you need to do is attach it to your motion rig. And I'll put a few shots in now of how to do that. Landing gear. Oh, hang on. I'm being told off here. <laughs> I'm a bit slow here at the moment. There we go. A bit more power in. Now, mine is attached with zip ties. Very simple. And depending on whether you've fitted the sensor so it knows it's going forward or backwards, you'll have to sort of swap the pitch and uh, roll axis around. It sounds complicated, but it really isn't. In fact, mine swapped around and it works a treat. It really does. Look at these clouds here. Beautiful. So once you've done that, it's important to make sure you've got a premium subscription to the Sim Racing Studio software. You need to then install the OpenXR uh, motion compensation file which then enables you to use it with the Vi Aero and the Riva G2 with the runtime because OpenXR is so much better than SteamVR it really is I think the only other thing to do is to make sure you've measured the distance between the seat and your headset so it knows where it is to be fair though I haven't done that with mine and it's working fine so that's it guys really uh, just a quick First impressions look, I can do a setup guide uh, as well if you're interested. But what a difference. It really is superb. Very clever little uh, bit of technology, really. I think the whip motion sensor is about, what did I pay for mine? I think it was about £30. And then the cable, which was a bit expensive, was about £17. But it really is worth it because as you can see here, it totally transforms, dare I say it, the immersion again. And it's essential for VR users because you don't get thrown around the cockpit anywhere near as bad as before. So yeah, massive congratulations to Sim Racing Studio for their software. I really do like how everything that I use, whether it's the haptic seat, the wit motion sensor and even the Doff Reality H2, it's just in one piece of software that I just start up, you know, before the sim. I don't have to, like, load up three different softwares, which would be really annoying. Anyway, I'm going to continue enjoying this beautiful and dramatic weather in the UK today in the Typhoon. I hope that's been of some interest to you guys. I think anyone who's looking at getting a motion rig, or if you've already got one, because I know many of you have now, you've definitely got to get motion compensation all sorted because that is the last bit of the puzzle to really get you inside the cockpit and feeling everything. It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I really do truly appreciate it. Please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now. Oh my word, look at that. And as we go back down again, <laughs> I'm now like feeling like I've just dropped out of the sky. Yet the. Transonic. And now we've gone transonic as well. But the view inside the cockpit has not changed. I wish I could just invite you all around my house so you can try this out. It's that good.